Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, uh, welcome to this conversation on MEC and edge uh, computing. Um, this is part of a report uh, uh, by Sensa Fili in collaboration with uh, Arsha Wireless News. And today, uh, I'm talking to Dan Sahar, uh, the founder and uh, VP of Product Marketing at Quilt. Um, Dan, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Mike. I'm happy to be here. So, um, can you tell us uh, uh, what is that you do at uh, uh, Quilt in uh, this area? Um, so, Quilt was founded uh, in 2010 with the object of uh, basically address helping service provider address the growth in online video. And um, streaming video was just starting back then with the likes of Netflix and, and YouTube, and that have obviously caused a major impact on, on service provider networks. And um, we realized that the best way to address that challenge was um, by um, basically changing the way that the, the data net, the broadband networks and mobile networks are built and by trying to bring the content delivery function of those videos primarily um, a lot closer to where the consumers is, to where the subscriber is. And by doing that gain uh, many efficiencies on multiple fronts, both on uh, economic front, as well as on uh, quality of experience fronts. And, the solution that we created is one that enables these service providers to, to do exactly that, to have, um, you, could, you could think of it as like the last line of content delivery that sits inside their network and is able to uh, basically acquire content from a, a range of sources and deliver it uh, in close proximity to where the users are. And uh, that, that, that's a major challenge because video is the most uh, uh, difficult type of content to, to, to transfer over fixed or mobile networks. Uh, and uh, can you tell us how, what you do to the, to the content itself? How did it change throughout the years? Uh, uh, what is it you do differently as you start, uh, from the, the time when you started on? Yeah, so video was obviously the main, like the, the big elephant in the room, but uh, there's been other types of contents over the years and, and we see video evolving as well. I think um, one of the major things was the move uh, first from progressive download into adaptive bit rate and adaptive bit rate is probably the method that most of the, the streaming video providers use today where, where progressive download has pretty much faded out. And, and I think the move that we're, we're in right now is to take that adaptive bit rate, uh, use both for live as well as for VOD content, and um, look to look at ways to optimize that delivery and, and, and to secure that delivery. We're seeing a growth in, um, in TLS-based, HTTPS-based uh, delivery mediums, and our solution uh, as a whole evolved to address both that um, as well as um, the, the changes um, on the transport and on the content side. Mm -hmm. So now, let, to get started from, sort of from the basics, we talk about edge computing as if uh, everybody knows what the edge is, uh, but <clears throat> how do you define the edge? Where is the proper location of the edge uh, to optimize uh, um, content delivery, video or other types of content? Yeah. So we see um, the edge in, in primarily two locations. Um, in, inside the network, it would be the first IP location in the network. Uh, on the fixed line side, like in a cable uh, network, that might be a CMTS location. On a, um, on a, it can be on the BRAS on the fixed line side. On the mobile side, it used to be um, at the SGI or GI level. We're, we're seeing it move deeper um, towards the Enode B, like uh, to the S1 interface. That would be like the first point of, of um, edge inside the network. The second place where the edge can play a role is, um, is on the device or at the home. So on the device, this can be um, essentially the handset and a software application running on the device. At the home, it can be a residential gateway or even like an Apple TV or, or a Chromecast or, or an Amazon Echo that has some capability, um, some content delivery capability built in inside of them. And there's, there's obviously different characteristics for uh, each one of these locations. Like some of them have more processing power, more storage. Others have less processing power, less storage, but also more, uh, they're a lot closer to the consumer, so they bring more value um, to the, the entire value chain. So how do you decide where for a specific type of content or a, a content provider or service provider, uh, where, where should they put their functionality? What, is there an easy way to, to figure it out? I think there's no like one right answer for that. You could, you could equate this to basic to like the, the way that packages are delivered in the real world. Like you can have 
Um, you can have US Post, you can have FedEx, yeah, pretty soon you'll have drones delivering them to your, your home. They all get the package there on time, um, but some of them cost more, others have like, and, and, and each one of them has different capabilities. And, and I think this is like, it's, it's a good analogy to how content delivery is done. Like there's some things that you can deliver from the centralized cloud, like uh, take from, from an AWS data center, and other, other things where there's, there's a lot more value to do them um, at the deep edge of the network, and we try to find a balance that has, um, ultimately it has to have an economic balance. So um, there has to be a benefit to the service provider to do this, to um, basically put, this, put these resources of compute and storage out um, so they can, they can leverage, um, the, uh, that content delivery can, be, can leverage these capabilities. And then you have to decide what goes in, what goes out, and what can come from the centralized file, what can come from the edge. Yeah, and I, I want to get back to the to the business model, the, to the business case uh, later. But before we get there, um, you know, at the very beginning there was video over fixed, uh, and then video over mobile. It was just completely different thing. You know, just very short things, short short, short videos, and uh, uh, <clears throat> very different. Is that still the case that we can make a clear distinction between fixed uh, and mobile? I think they're becoming like very, very much the same. I think you, you see, uh, I think the operators are changing uh, as video is also changing. And uh, you look at the, on the consumer side, people watch uh, videos on their mobile devices. It can be on Wi-Fi, but you know, when they get out, out of their homes, they continue to watch the same videos. So it's, it's basically, I think the content is becoming um, a lot more similar across the mediums. You, maybe you have a bigger screen on one than, than on the other, but the content is not, um, you know, it, it's not, it, there's some adaptation that, that you have to do for the screen. But other than that, the transport medium, um, the, the ABR formats, they're exactly the same on, on both types. And I think it's a good thing that basically the, the industry is becoming like one big industry that you can watch video wherever you are. And I guess the expectations are also pretty much the same from the user perspective. So they're not willing to say, well, since it's mobile, it might not be as good quality. They expect the same good quality. Now, for you, what does it mean in terms of the sort of convergence of fixed and wireless? What, what does it mean for you in terms of the solutions you provide? Yeah, so our solution um, has like two, two main components. One is the, the Edge Cloud knows the, the software that sits like inside the network. And then the other is like a cloud component that is, you could think of it as the control plane that uh, decides how to uh, basically delegate the traffic into, uh, into those caches. Now these Edge Cloud nodes can sit in a mobile side uh, and, and they can sit in a fixed line side. Uh, what goes in them has to be location specific. So if, if I have a software node that sits on the fixed line side, obviously it will cache the content that is relevant uh, uh, for that for that part of the network um, like if you have an operator that has both mobile and fixed maybe you'll have nodes that that have uh, the mobile formats uh, for those videos and if, if they're on the mobile side and, and uh, the equivalent nodes on the fixed side will have simply like um, encoding uh, that is more suitable for, for Apple TV for Chromecast for uh, more suitable for um, the residential devices but the, the function will be very very much the same and I guess that's good also for uh, service providers that uh, increasingly use both fixed and mobile from their end. So it's a better way for them to manage video and other content because it's, it's a similar platform regardless of what they yeah, we, we, we look at it as like as uh, the operators will have like a single platform that they can manage across both mobile and fixed. And um, this platform will also be able to address both um, the operator's own content if they have that content. You know, many operators have a, uh, a video side of it to their business, as well as um, third party content that comes uh, over the internet, like also known as over the top content in some, in some circles. One layer that will be able to address both of these and basically there would be like a single resource that can handle, um, that can adapt. Uh, if an ISP has, um, you know, a big launch of, uh, of a new series, you can uh, allocate the resource to that. If there's like a big live event, um, going on, uh, on over the top sources, the resources will shift to that. So, and actually you, you raise an important issue that who, who owns the content? It could be the service provider, it could be a third party um, content distribution networks. So uh, what is their role as we move more functionality to the edge? Um, how is their role changing or is it changing? 
So uh, uh, the way that we see the edge uh, in our solution is we help the service provider become part of the content delivery chain. Um, there's other things that the content that I'm sorry, we help the service provider become part of uh, the content delivery chain. Now, um, the way that the way that we do that is we basically create an API that enables um, various content providers to uh, make use of these resources. But the owner of the, the actual components, the storage and compute, is the service provider, and they have to uh, decide how to uh, make use of these resources. We give, we give them the tools to, to do exactly that, to manage these resources. Um, I think the understanding across the board on service provider is that there is not only going to be their content, there's going to be like consumers expect to have content from a, a range of sources and they and uh, the service providers have to build the best network that can handle them all. So they, they so the serve for the service provider, they have the retain control over the con I mean over the, how the content is, is transmitted, but at the same time, they need to work with anybody that provides that content to make sure that that's actually working as expected. Right? Yeah. Exactly. They would, I wouldn't say take control. I would, I would say they participate in content mm -hmm. delivery because um, I think the, the current delivery medium is still very valid and is still going to be uh, used. Uh, a lot of content is going to be streamed from the centralized cloud. But for some things that um, you could say the popular content or content that is like very latency sensitive, then you can put into play the resources that the service providers has. These are network resources that nobody else has. And basically, um, a content provider will have to decide when, which content to stream from uh, the centralized cloud, which to delegate, to try to delegate into the service provider. I think the operators have, like, can play a much bigger role than they do today in content delivery. Right. So, and how is um, that, um, uh, you know, uh, some organizations' efforts like uh, MEC um, and others like uh, FOG, uh, how are they helping or uh, accelerating this trend? I think there's there's technical challenges on on several fronts. One is how like on the mobile side is how to get um, a server function to be inside um, the mobile network. And I think MEC is doing a lot of work on, on that front. Basically, if you're going in the on the S1 interface, how are you going to take care of, of billing? How are you going to get into the GTP tunnels? A range of of questions, um, you could think of them like interworking function questions. How do you put a server inside a mobile network? There's another set, and, and I think uh, the MEC group is doing a great job on that front. There's another set of um, interfaces that have to be defined, which is how do I, as a content provider, that I have like um, uh, an SVOD offering on the internet, how can I make use of, of uh, the resources? How does an ISP publish it even has um, a function that, that I can leverage. And um, we've been doing a lot of, Quilt has been doing a lot of work on that front under uh, the umbrella of a group called the Streaming Video Alliance, which is trying to create like that set of APIs, how um, a content provider or a commercial CDN can make use of what we call an open caching function that sits inside this edge cloud uh, that the service provider has. So what, what have you learned so far as you've been working on this, and you've been working on this somewhat ahead of uh, MEC, you know, full standardization. Um, what, what is it you've learned so far? So I think it's basically, it's a lot of um, balancing the, the needs of, um, of the entire ecosystem. Obviously you have like a tricky situation where um, some service providers also uh, compete to some extent with, with internet content providers, um, you know, Many, they both have video services, but, the, but there is the common understanding that the consumer is shared between the two. And, and I think there is a greater, um, um, I would say, maturity in the industry that now people are figuring out there is that the content providers, CDNs, and service providers have to work together to create like an infrastructure that will benefit everybody economically, but also quality-wise. And, and I think that's something that took many years to build um, and you know, when we started out, there was, I would say, um, some level of, of mistrust between the two sides. I think it's, it's becoming a lot better now. Yeah, and I think that, that that's crucial because, as I said, at the beginning, there was more, I guess there was a, a monetization issue. Who's going to, you know, who's going to get it? Is somebody getting a free ride? Who's getting and, and I think that a lot of those issues are being gradually um, resolved and uh, and so this is important to have to see all this uh, uh, standardization uh, work I had. Um, are you happy in terms of 
who, the, the, the different parts of the ecosystem that are involved, do you think there is now a balance? As you said, it seems like it's, things are getting much better in that respect. Yeah, I think I think it's growth. You see, like several initiatives that that are driving uh, more collaboration. Like in the streaming video lines that I mentioned earlier is one. You have the TIFF project that Facebook is driving as a, as another such initiative. But I think ultimately you see uh, a far greater collaboration between the two sides that didn't exist before. And you know, it's kind of like an understanding that service providers have a, a lot of a lot to offer to the ecosystem and they own assets that nobody else has like they own the network they own real estate that they frankly nobody else has and the network has capabilities that are unique that you cannot just get anywhere like you could say multicast is something that um if i'm a internet content provider there's no way i can get my hands on multicast without um a service provider to help me out and then on the other side you see a service provider understanding that content providers are what drive a lot more data into the network, which is good, and the consumers ultimately, that's what they, that's what they consume, a lot, lot more uh, over the top content. So they, their network has to support that. Yeah, so fr from your perspective at Quilt, what is that you feel you do that it's uh, uh, crucially needed and it's different from everybody else? So I think uh, the first fundamental uh, principle in Quilt was that we are at the edge. We've been deploying software at the edge of the network where there was never before like compute and storage and we were one of the first companies to do that and and i think the edge has a lot of intricacies that maybe are, are um, not trivial to to solve and it's basically how do you have like a massively distributed um nodes software nodes that you have to manage how do you um really squeeze the most performance out of um very limited compute and storage that you can have at the edge because of just like the real estate limitations. The other aspect is the ecosystem that we're that we're building both technically as well as uh, commercially with the content ecosystem, with content providers as well as CDNs. And I think we're ahead of the curve in terms of um, the APIs that are required to drive this collaboration. How, uh, as I said, content providers and CDNs can make use of of the edge cloud of uh, the open caching um, function that sits inside it. Right. So, uh, yeah, um, let, let's let's move a little bit to the, to the to the business case because this is something that it's it's increasingly a, becoming a hot topic in uh, uh, edge computing. You obviously need to add more uh, infrastructure at the edge, and that comes with a cost. It's true you get more better performance, but what what is the trade off? So, how do you look at the business case from your point of view? So, I think the business case you have to look at who's gaining what um, from, from this uh, edge computing model. And I think every bit that is streamed from, from the edge inside a service provider is a bit that doesn't have to cross the entire network and doesn't have to, to cross the core of the internet. It means that a service provider gains um, economic efficiency of, of streaming that bit from there instead of um, coming from a transit or a peering location. There's value there. The other value is consumer uh, experience because it's, it's streamed there. There is um, a greater ability to uh, overcome any bottlenecks in the network and much more latency um, as the content is streamed to the consumer. So that's the benefit both to the service provider in terms of um, churn experience that, that they're getting, but also to the content provider. And um, I think the content provider side, if people are striving towards like a full HD experience all the time, without buffering, this is the way to do it. Um, so there has to be, and, and that equates also to uh, commercial CDNs that are the medium that many content providers use to distribute their content today. This gives them better reach uh, in, in places that they cannot reach today uh, with far lower latency. So there is a balance between the two things. Who is going to uh, basically compensate each other for the balance? It's, I, I think market will, will dictate how exactly that that is done but um, but we found that that equation balances itself out mm -hmm. and when we do when we're streaming content from the edge there's economic benefits across the board uh, uh, for, uh, across the board of the ecosystem right and so yeah basically you can you can use the resources that are available in, in, a, in a more efficient way um, do you see uh, in terms of like ownership and capex uh, initial investment uh, um, <clears throat> an increasing role for the from the other the venue owner the content providers uh, the cdns to 
to basically participate because it's something where, as you say, they benefit from it as well as the service provider. So are they willing to step up and put some investment as well? I think that's, um, you know, that's primarily uh, something that will, will fall on the shoulders of um, the service providers as they're building their network. I think it's expected of them because that's, that's what they do. They, they build great networks. And this edge computing is, you could say, it's, it's like the move from traditional networking into uh, networking that uses storage and compute. And so it's basically move, shifting resources from one place um, to another place. I think both them and venue owners are the ones that are going to uh, be responsible for, for building out that infrastructure. But there's ways for them to, to gain um, more benefits, I think, over over the long term, that's a, a far more economic way to build networks than simply to, to throw routers at this problem. Right, right, right. But and uh, I guess the venue owners also, as you mentioned, are going to have a, a more uh, a wider role because, uh, you know, a, a lot of the infrastructure will be covering their premises, a lot of uh, services that are going to be location based or content that is location based, mm -hmm. think of a stadium. So um, how do you see their role changing in, in this process as we know, we move functionality towards the edge. Um, I'm not, I can't really answer that, that question, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, I haven't thought about that question. Okay, no, no problem. Let's, Let, no problem. let's, uh, uh, let's move to, the, um, to what you're currently working on right now. Uh, and as we move forward, move to uh, on the mobile side, to uh, 5G. Um, uh, standardization, there's a lot of standardization, a lot of work uh, uh, going on. And what is that you are focusing your attention on these days to get ready for the next, the challenges over the next five years? So our focus, I would say, is on two fronts. One is with the technological front is basically to um, create standardization around um, the APIs that are required to enable this open caching function inside the, the Edge Cloud. And, um, and manifest that into our product as well and basically have the ability to have a range of, of APIs that the, the content ecosystem can, can use. Um, increase uh, our capabilities with, when it comes to um, service providers own content. Um, and then on the uh, ecosystem side, we're, we're trying to enhance our content provider and CDN relationships so that um, they can make use of this, uh, of this edge cloud layer uh, that sits inside the service provider. Excellent. Well, sounds like uh, there's a lot, a lot to do, a lot of exciting uh, new things coming up. Um, then thanks for being with us uh, today, sharing your thoughts on this. Thanks a lot. So this was a conversation for a report of MEC and Edge Computing by Sensafili in collaboration with RCL Wireless News, and uh, I would like to thank you all for uh, listening in.